So, you think you want to start streaming, but you don't have a clue how to do that. I'm going to try to do my best to teach you how. First things first, you're going to need to find your system specs. You can do that by pressing the Windows key and the break key. That's going to bring up your system in the control panel, or alternatively, you can go to your control panel, click on system, and there you go. This is going to give you your processor, your memory, and your operating system. Uh, that's kind of the important information to have is whether or not you have 64-bit or 32-bit. You can't run a 64-bit program on a 32-bit system, so yeah. Um, if you don't know what type of video card you have, you can run the DirectX Diagnostic tool by typing dxdiag, and there you go. I have a GTX 780 Ti, so I'm good to go. Now that you have that little bit of information, you're going to need to download some streaming software. I recommend OBS. It's my program of choice. It's open source. It's free. Um, the, you could also use XSplit, but uh, you'd have to have a paid license to get most of the features unlocked. And from what I understand, OBS is a little less CPU um, CPU intensive, so you know it's a little lighter on the CPU uh, in most cases. So that's why I go with OBS. Um, go ahead and click the download button, and it'll download an installer. Once that's done downloading, you can go ahead and open it up, click yes, and go through the prompts. Next, I agree, and then it'll install. I'm not going to actually install it because I already have it installed, so I don't need to. Once you've done that, you're going to need to open up your OBS now, as I said, this is the 64-bit version. If you don't have 64-bit operating system, use the 32-bit version. You can use the 32-bit version on a 64-bit system, but um, the performance will be a little less. It's not much. It's only maybe like 5%. Uh, so now that we're in here, um, you're going to see some stuff here that you're not going to have. Yours is going to look more like, uh, let's do this. Yours is probably going to look like that. Uh, also, let's go ahead and do that. You don't have to do those steps. I just did that to make it a little bit easier on myself. Um, so now that you have this open, you're going to open up your settings. And under broadcast settings, there's a whole bunch of servers. You want to find the one that's closest to you geographically. I use the uh, Ashburn, Virginia ser uh, server. It's just my personal preference. I've used the Dallas, Texas server sometimes. That works just fine for me too. Uh, sometimes I'll use the Florida server. It's all dependent on you know the server load. Sometimes you'll get better results. So the reason why you wanted to check that first is so when you go ahead and test your upload speed, you'll know what server to pick. So I use testmy.net. Do not use speed test. It's um, prone to peaks and when you're uploading to you know say a video service like Twitch you cannot take advantage of any of those peaks so yeah I, I would recommend testmy.net um, go ahead and, and select a manual test size and go for something big like 6 megabytes let it go ahead and run its, uh, run its thing it might take a few moments There you go. My upload speed is 5 megabytes. Megabits? Megabytes? I don't know. doesn't matter. Now that you did that, um, you're going to want to go to OBS and find your stream settings estimator. Uh, this can be found at obs.com slash estimator. Um, I'm going to provide all the links in the description. Uh, select your CPU type. This is what you got from your system specs. I have a 4th gen i7 as well. Uh, what kind of graphics card do you have? I have a 560 or higher. I'm going to be playing a lot of high motion action, uh, first person shooter type games. And my upload was 5 megabytes, which is 5,000 kilobytes. Um, my in game resolution is going to be 1920 by 1080. What is my recommended settings? Set FPS to 30, 
consider setting FPS to 60 if you have spare CPU power for improved quality. I usually don't just because of, uh, you know, bitrate uh, issues. I don't like slamming a massive bitrate out. Um, in order to run 60 FPS, you got to have a pretty high bitrate, and a lot of people can't watch that. So, your upload speed is sufficient for 720p, 1080p, enable CFR compatibility, enable CVR for improved streaming, okay, whatever. That's a whole bunch of stuff you don't really need to know. Let's get back into OBS. Now that you have all that information, you're going to go back into your settings. Your general settings is uh, where I made that setting profile. You can make one if you'd like. Um, it's a little easier. I have a whole bunch. It just makes it easier for me. Um, I have the notification area icon. Uh, none of this really matters. So, go ahead and go to encoding. Under encoding, you're going to want to choose your X264 encoder. It's probably the best encoder out there. Uh, QuickSync is integrated graphics encoder. Um, this is not as good as X264, but it is an option if you don't have a video card. Um, NVIDIA NVENC encoder um, is not recommended. You have to have a massive bitrate for it to look good. So, yeah, don't use that. Use X264. Uh, make sure you use constant bitrate and enable CBR padding. You want to have both those checked. I don't use a custom buffer size. I don't need to. My max bitrate right now is 2200. Um, it all depends on what your upload was. My upload was 5 megabytes, so I could go uh, pretty high. I could go all the way up to 80% of whatever that is. Um, Twitch recommends, uh, I think, 3300 as your max. So um, just keep in mind, if you set it to that, a lot of people can't watch that. It's uh, just something to think about. Your audio encoding, you're going to want to choose the AAC codec. That's the recommended codec. Your bitrate needs to be uh, somewhere right in here. 128 is pretty good. Um, you can set it lower if you have some uh, bitrate issues here, if your upload speed is really, really low. But uh, it's not recommended because it's going to sound like crap, to be honest. Uh, your format. 4800 kilohertz, your channels, stereo. Oh, make sure your bitrate doesn't change. All that's done, go ahead and click apply. Go to broadcast settings. Uh, make sure you have your server selected. Um, you're going to want mode live stream. File output is to do a local recording. Streaming service, I use Twitch. You can use all these other services. I prefer Twitch. Uh, to get your stream key, you're going to have to go into your Twitch dashboard. Uh, just go ahead and log in, and then it's, uh, I think it's under here, dashboard. Once you're here, go to stream key. Go ahead and show key, and then copy that entire key that shows up. I'm not going to do it just uh, because if anybody who has your stream key can stream to your channel. And rather than risk me forgetting to blur that out, I'm just not going to show it. Go ahead and click that, copy down whatever the, whatever's there, and paste it in here. Make sure you don't get any extra spaces or anything like that. Try to be as accurate as possible. Uh, Twitch recommends that you have auto reconnect selected. I don't have that selected. I um, I just don't prefer it. You can have that on. It'll just reconnect after 10 seconds if you, uh, if you get kicked off. You can enable um, the minimize network impact if you have issues with on your network. I have it disabled. I don't need it. So uh, but that's an option in case you need it. Uh, you can automatically save stream to a file. I usually don't. If I do, it's because I'm running some sort of audio test, as you can see. Um, replay buffer length is... Um, you know, I'm not sure what that is. That's something new that they put in there. I just let, left it at one and, you know, killed it, basically. I don't want it on. Uh, yeah, make sure you click Apply. If you don't, and you move to another uh, option here, it'll ask you to uh, save the settings. So let's save them. Under video, your video adapter is going to be your video card. It's going uh, OBS is going to use your video card to grab your game um, images and layer them in your scene. So make sure you choose the, the appropriate video adapter. If you have two cards, uh, we'll, we'll get into that later. I'm assuming you don't. Uh, your base resolution, I use 1920 by 1080. The reason why is because my monitor is 1920 by 1080. Um, if you change this, it's going to change the resolution of your monitor. So leave it at your resolution. 
your monitor resolution, I should say. Uh, your resolution downscale. This is what's going to be streamed to Twitch. A lot of people use 720. I have recently dropped it down to uh, 1096 by 616 just to get a little bit of extra um, bits per pixel is what it's called. So we'll get into that maybe in a later video. Uh, basically, by reducing your resolution, you can get away with a lower bit rate. So most people will use uh, 1280 by 720. Your filter is your downscaling filter. By linear fastest is the recommended. Um, if you have some extra CPU power, you can go ahead and go down to Land Coast. Uh, it's probably uh, preferred to go to this. You'll get a lot less blurring when you get a, the downscaling happening. So that's why I recommend that. FPS is recommended to be at 30 uh, frames per second. You can drop it a little lower if you're not playing like a, a really fast uh, first person shooter type game. Um, you can even go all the way up to 60 FPS if you want, but keep in mind that's going to drop your bits per pixel. Bits per pixel is basically what's going to, um, how to word it, it's going to determine whether or not your video is going to get pixelated um, when you're streaming. So say you're streaming at 3000 bit rate at 60 frames per second, you're going to have half as much, uh, half as many bits per pixel or half as many have as much information per frame as you would streaming at 30 frames per second. I hope that makes sense. Maybe I'll try to get into it in a little later video. That's just the technicality behind it. Anyway, moving on. Disable arrow. It is not recommended to disable arrow. Only use disable arrow if you're using a monitor capture. That's under um, the scene settings, so we'll get into that. I do not recommend having this disabled. All right, going into audio desktop audio device uh, default to get to that you can go here right click playback devices and set it however you want I'm using currently the optical output I have a headset that I use sometimes so I'll go here and I'll set as default device set as default communication device so that is uh, how you set that up and then by leaving this at default it will automatically switch that way you're not sitting here constantly switching through this stuff uh, your microphone. I have a Blue Yeti, so that's what I use. You can use default. I just select the Yeti by, you know, that way I always know that it's going to be there. Choosing default is the same thing. You can go into here, into recording devices, and the Yeti set as default. So that's how that works. Uh, you can force your microphone auxiliary to mono. I don't do that. Uh, show only connected devices. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Push to talk delay. All this stuff doesn't really matter. Your desktop boost. Uh, multiple of one. So this means like 100%. If you do two, it's 200%. Same with this. Um, it's not recommended to use this unless you absolutely have to. If you have like a, a lower quality mic and it's not producing a, an appropriate sound, if it can't, you know, it's not getting loud enough, you can boost this up and then play with it from there. Um, like I said, it's not recommended to change any of those. Your mic uh, sync offset is in case your mic is um, has a delay built in. So Go ahead and click apply. Um, hotkeys, you can set up any number of hotkeys you want. Uh, let's go ahead and go into advanced. Um, so I use multi-threaded optimizations. I have a multi-threaded processor. Most people might not need this if they don't have a multi-threaded processor. If you do, it's recommended to have that selected. Process priority class is normal for me. You can have it above normal if you really want. That way OBS is, um, you know, higher up in the chain it'll it'll get more processing power versus like say the game or something it'll it might reduce some of your frame drops but I would recommend just a normal processing priority most of the time you don't need to change this type of stuff scene buffering time milliseconds is 400 uh, I think that's the standard for twitch let me double check because I don't know offhand yeah um, Disable encoding while previewing, um, you don't necessarily need to do that. Uh, basically what this means is anytime you're previewing your stream, it's going to be doing the encoding. Um, it's recommended just to leave that unchecked. Uh, just saying. Allow other modifiers on hotkeys. Um, this is more of a, let's see, how to word it. I wouldn't worry about this. You can leave that unchecked. If you really want, you can check it. But um, 
Yeah, you shouldn't need that. Uh, your video, your X264 pre, uh, CPU preset. This by default is set to very fast. Do not change this unless you have to. By moving this up one, uh, I am basically uh, I'm prompted by OBS saying, hey, don't do that. Uh, but the reason why I do that is because I have some extra CPU power that I can use and it will change the X264 um, encoding options. Uh, that's some pretty advanced stuff. We're not going to get into that. I'm just going to be honest. We don't need to worry about any of that. We're just trying to get you live and streaming. Um, you can play with this a little bit if you want, but it's recommended to leave it at very fast. Your encoding profile should be on main, uh, not high, main. Um, this will make sure that you can uh, your stream can be viewed on almost any device, any mobile device, stuff like that. So leave it on main. Your key free uh, keyframe interval is two recommended. Uh, UCFR should be checked, and then here is the custom X two six four encoder settings. So you can go into here and you can add all kinds of stuff if you want. Uh, but this is some very advanced stuff. Like I said, we're not going to get into that. Um, basically, you can leave this on very fast and then add some stuff into here to get some of the faster um, preset uh, profile um, stuff. So, yeah, we're not getting into that. Encode in full range doesn't need to be checked. This is only if you really, really need it. I do not recommend having that checked. You're not going to be streaming anything above... 60 FPS generally, so don't check that. Force desktop audio to use video timestamp for as a base for audio time. This is good if you have uh, some audio desync issues. Most people don't need to have this checked, but if you do check it, um, that's in case you're getting desync with your mic and your video. So that's an option. Uh, automatic low latency mode. Uh, you shouldn't need this. This is some you know, in case you have some issues when you're uh, trying to stream. So these are these are more or less um, troubleshooting uh, options. Uh, quick, quick Sync Encoder, like I said, this is for um, your integrated graphics. So more than likely you're not going to need this. I might have some extra options here that you might not. Uh, yours will probably say Microphone Noise Gate. And that's all it's going to say. This is for your mic. So if I enable preview, uh-oh, I might be breaking stuff. Am I breaking stuff? I see what's happening. Here we go. Uh, cancel. Turn that on. So now you can see my voice bouncing up and down. Um, I do not have this enabled. This is in case you have a lot of noise either in the line of your microphone or in your room in general. Um, basically you can see when I stop talking it hovers right right around there in that, that certain spot which is all the noise that's on there so if you wanted to get rid of that noise you'd want to set it kind of something like this so the noise is right here is where it's stopping so when it comes down it's going to shut your mic line completely off and then as soon as you start talking, and once it passes this closed threshold, the mic's going to turn on at the open threshold. So, yeah, I mean, that's generally not recommended. It's only in case you have some serious issues with your, you know, your noise on your mic line. Uh, like I said, probably not recommended. Uh, some extra things that I have is um, these are plugins that you can get for OBS. I use this server ping plugin sometimes just to see what the ping is to each server. So when I'm sitting there trying to figure out if I want to use the uh, Virginia server or the New York server, it'll tell me the ping and more importantly the jitter. You don't want to have a massive jitter. So I think that's about it for settings. So you should have all your settings set. Uh, you can get the settings here or up here. Moving on, um, let's go ahead and set up a scene. Actually, you know what? Let's go. It seems like this tutorial is getting pretty long. We're gonna end it here, and we'll move on to another uh, well, part two, I guess. Another, you know, another tutorial uh, as far as setting up your scenes. This generally was how to set up OBS 
to get it running. So we'll take a little break, come back at another video.